acting coach for his <laughs> opener. You know, he kind of mentioned uh, something about two weeks ago. He said, hey, we're going to expand on this role kind of in passing. And I was like, okay. And and then maybe about a week ago, he said, I want you to take over and um, and run the team for this football game. And, and I was excited, obviously. I mean, just to uh, um, be in front of the group and, and take control of everything, I think it's a big honor. And I think Mike Vrabel deserves a lot of credit. All right, he deserve, deserves a lot of credit, not just for doing this for me, um, but I think around the league, hopefully more coaches will give assistant coaches opportunities to, to do this because there's no, like you got all these different programs, um, but there's nothing more better than actually getting the experience. And, and I think he deserves a lot of credit for doing that. I heard a rumor that you're totally transparent about preseason playing time as a head coach. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a meeting a little bit later and discuss all of that. Um, but, you know, we're going to play the guys that we need to see, and um, it'll be exciting. You've uh, obviously done a good job here. you got a promotion to assistant head coach in the offseason. Do you have aspirations of being a head coach yourself one day? And is that uh, absolutely. I mean, if I didn't, then when he asked me to do this, I would have said, heck no. So, um, I mean, I'd, I'd love to be a head coach. I, I think you have um, – I've been in this league a while. I've been coaching football for a while. And um, you have a lot of – some head coaches that are play callers. Um, but I believe that just because you're a play caller doesn't mean that you can run a football team. There's so much more to – getting these guys to play you know when you when you're a head football coach you got to be able to reach both sides of the football and connect with players like the way the world is and the way I've always believed that it is you can't you can't be a head football coach in this league without being able to connect with the football players you can call shot plays and run plays and blitzes and all those different things. But at the end of the day, uh, this game is still about people. And no matter how good of a play caller you are, if you can't get that um, offensive lineman to block or you can't get that defensive lineman to turn and run to the football, then what are we really doing? So um, that's just my thought on, on what I think a head football coach is. And I've been fortunate enough to work for um, a great one here um, that's innovative, that's thoughtful, um, that's able to connect with players. Um, and then uh, Joe Tiller at Purdue, uh, Bill Hayes at North Carolina a and I've been fortunate enough to work Dennis Allen, New Orleans Saints, uh, Dan Campbell. I've worked for a lot of good head football coaches, and all of those guys have that ability to connect with players. What are you most curious about in this? I mean, Mike was telling us, you know, the punt card and stuff that he had no idea about the first time he did it. Yeah. I'm wondering if there's something that you're kind of most curious about. That, yeah. that I, I'm, I'm better prepared than him because he told me everything he had to go through. So it, it's, it's, you know, the thing I'm probably most curious about is just – um, going up and down the sidelines because during the games I'm focused on the defensive line and the defense. Usually I don't have much time to look at what's going on on offense. I'm just focused on um, on our guys. And now that's Clint's job, to Clint McMillan's job, to focus on the defensive line. My job is to focus on the, the football team and handle all the situations and talk to Stretch and communicate with him and Timmy and Shane. And um, and those guys who eventually I believe will be head football coach. We got a lot of great football coaches on this staff, and so I'm really just going to lean on them, just like Mike does during this football game. Are you hoping for opportunities like throwing a challenge flag, like making a fourth down well, decision. Hopefully, like the that. refs will make good calls, and we don't have to throw a challenge flag. So you know what? I'm honestly, I'm just. Uh, I think in coaching, you 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 just be who you are, and I'm I'm gonna coach like my personality is. I'm I'm gonna you know when the situations come up, we'll be ready for it, and and if I'm not, then we'll just ask questions. Like again, we got great football coaches, and um, you know you talk about reality shows. I tell you, a great one would be if you can do one that if you can hear what's going on on those dang headsets. It's 
It's real interesting. What have been the player reaction, uh, especially the guys in your D line room when they found out? <laughs> they're they're uh, so Jeff, um, all those guys. Hey, okay, he's acting different now. He's the head coach, and it, you know what? It's been fun. I mean, we we spend so much time. Um, around each other that um, we care about each other. So I think most of those guys were, were happy for me to have this opportunity. But what this opportunity also is, is it gives um, Clint an opportunity to, to coach the defensive line. I think the thing that's not talked about a lot um, since this was announced is Matt, Matt Gregg has also taken over for um, – for Todd with the training room. So I'll have a meeting with Matt tomorrow and we'll kind of go over um, the injuries and do all of that. So um, this organization, um, Mike is the one that made a decision, but obviously he had to um, cover it with ownership. So I think this this team deserve a, deserves a lot of credit for what they're trying to do here. When Mike came to you uh, about the assistant head coach previously, how did that conversation go? What is, how has that changed? So I was sitting in my office in the dark, burning a candle like I normally do, and um, and he um, came over, shut the door, and said, "Hey, I want to do this. Um, I want to make you an assistant head coach. Nothing's really going to change because of what you do already. You know, I don't. A title for me doesn't doesn't." change who I am or what I do with this football team. I, I care about the football team. Um, anybody that knows me know that I, I love the, these football players. Like I love them and care about them. And, um, you know, we're able to, I'm able to reach uh, both sides of the football and talk to those guys and communicate with them. And I mean, that that's really what this business is. It's it's hard, like it's really hard and it's long. We take up a lot of, we spend a lot of time together. Guys get banged up. So I said this before, you gotta be able to connect with these guys or when times get tough, they're not gonna follow you. So uh, Mike saw that and I believe that he's a successful head coach because he also has that ability. You been talking to a lot of the guys, even the offensive ones, to your point. You know, they said that there's a relationship and a lot of communication. Is that something that just kind of comes naturally, or do you make a concerted effort to make sure that you're reaching out to everybody? I don't. I mean, obviously, the offensive linemen, because we go against each other um, all the time. I remember when I first got here um, in 2018, I showed Taylor Lewan a write-up that I had on him from the Miami Dolphins, what his strengths were, what his weaknesses were. Here's what you need to work on. And those guys will come in and ask questions. Um, and then, I mean, Ryan Tannehill, I've been with Ryan Tannehill longer than any player or coach in my career. I've been, I was with him when he was a wide receiver at Texas A&M. I was with him uh, with the Miami Dolphins and then here in Tennessee. So that's an easy relationship to have. But I, I think it's got to come organically. Like, you don't just go out and try to – um, develop a relationship with a guy. You just, if you care, you care. And I think that these players um, know and understand that part. Like with the, with the quarterbacks, right? You, obviously, you know, Tannehill has to get his, Levis, Willis, et cetera. How are you going to go about deciding who gets to play when and how long? You know? So, so we're going to have a staff meeting as soon as we get done here and kind of go over um, play time and all of that. We really haven't decided. I mean, when you we just finished practice, so we got to come and look at the injuries and um, do all of that. And then we'll decide more on the, the play time. So, I mean, all those guys have done a good job um, th this camp. And I've watched them closely, just like I watched the offensive line. When you're watching your guys on tape, you're obviously going against an opponent. So you're able to see those guys. So um, we'll, we'll sit down and talk about that more tonight and then a little bit more tomorrow morning and, and just kind of see where we are before we get on this plane. When, when you talk about other teams hopefully following suit with this kind of opportunity, there have been other assistants who have been given kind of fractional opportunities in terms of the like game day. Yeah. Do you think this will cut through some of the ambiguity when people go into interviews being able to say, hey, look, I didn't. it wasn't fractional. You don't have to sort through what I might or might not have done. I had a game day. Like how much will that help? Yeah, it's more this what Vrabes is doing here is more than a game day. All right. And and um 
I mean, like I'm taking over really five o'clock today. It will be my first meeting with the 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 football team, and then that'll carry on into tomorrow. And um, I already met with the officials, and so there there have been some examples of coaches that have given play callers, okay, you can call this half or you can call um, this game or, hey, you're the head coach for um, uh, when we get to the field. But this is completely different, all right? And I don't know of any teams that are doing what we're doing here right now where you're taking over, you're meeting with the media, you're doing all, all of these different things. And um, that's why I said Mike Vrabel deserves a lot of credit. And the, the thing you guys don't know, like you see him uh, and he comes up here and I know how Vrabes can be. Like, <laughs> Trust me, I, I know how he can be. But what, what you don't see is what he's able to do um, for us as coaches and for our families. Like he's a lot of guys have been promoted. A lot of guys have gotten jobs from here. Um, this guy, I, I'll do anything for Mike Vrabel before a assistant head coach and before um, being put in this position because there, and there's really one reason. And I know that this guy cares about my family. All right. And Trust me, for a guy like me, that, that means a whole hell of a lot. Have, so. you gotten, have you gotten a sense externally maybe what this actually might mean to other people in the league? Like, has anybody reached out and said, hey, we're so happy? Let's so, I honestly, I'm not really. I mean, there have been, I probably had 200 text messages from different people when, it's, when it was first announced. But I'm so locked in on trying to get – Jeff Simmons not to jump off sides. Like, that's really what my job has been up until this point. And now I'm focused more on the football team. I'll, I'll, um, I'll talk to some more guys. And, and I said this before, I think we have guys on this staff that I hope in the future get the same opportunity. I mean, Shane and Timmy and, and, and Ryan Crow and Booker and, and all the guys on offense, Rob Moore, like I hope they all get, get the same opportunity. I think this is, um, you have all these different programs. I came up through the minority coaching internship deal. I, I, I 1999, Jacksonville Jaguars, um, did one with the Chicago or not Chicago Bears, the the um, the Seahawks and the Dallas Cowboys, and so I was a product of um, of that. But I'm not sitting here today because of um, because of that. I'm sitting here because of how hard I've worked and 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 my value to the team. Now, game days, your, your focus has been on getting your guys ready to play, work with them throughout throughout the game. Have you thought about what's going to be like on Saturday with so much stuff happening that you've never had to deal with before, and could it potentially be overwhelming? Or are you excited about it? No, that? I don't think. I mean, I I've been through a lot in my life. It takes a lot to overwhelm me. I, you just roll with the punches. Like I, Braves have kind of gone over um, what game day is going to be like. He's gone over everything that I need to be prepared for. I'm sure there's some things that's going to come up, but that's what. Being a position coach, that's what's being a coordinator, that's what being a, a head coach is about, is just as these things come up, you figure it out. And, and um, that's why you have good coaches around you because you can't do everything. You, you, we, we'll figure it out. And I'm, I'm just excited about the opportunity. What's the last time you may have had butterflies before a game, Coach, and what do you anticipate this would be like? I definitely don't have butterflies. Like, trust me, because I, I, I'll be just fine. Like, I'm not – I'm excited for the football team. And, and I don't – I'm sitting here now, and hopefully after this, it's not really about me. It's about the guys that are playing in this football game. There's guys that are fighting for jobs. Um, and, and that's really what this thing's about. And, and those are the guys that I'm, I have. If I have any butterflies, trust me, it's not for me. It's for, for I want to see how um, Tajay Spears and some of these guys that haven't played, Will Levis and some of these guys that haven't played in a pro football game. You know, I'm more concerned about them. I'll, I'll be fine. Like, I've, I've been in quite a few pro football games, not as a head football coach, but I still have been there. So, well, I'll be just fine. 
forward thinking is this of Mike to do this and, and how much does this show that he kind of has his pulse on this organization? I think that, again, he deserves credit because he's very, very, very thoughtful. Um, and he, he, he had this in mind months ago. And, and he told me, he said, you know, you can't get experience being a coordinator without being a coordinator. You can't get experience without being a – or being a head coach without being a head coach. So here you go. You're going to be the head football coach for 48 hours. Every You're doing everything um, the way that you want to do it, and that's what we're going to do. So I think it's – it's I, I – I, believe and I hope that more teams will follow suit to, and do this just to give give guys experience. Do you think Rabel does it you want to do totally differently? <laughs> no, not really. I mean we we the the reason that Rabes and I um get along so well and we get along very well is because we see football the same. Like there's not I don't believe that we should throw it a hundred times or blitz every snap. Like we see football exactly the same. And so that's why it's easy to have uh, conversations with each other about, Hey, what do you think here? What do you, what do you think there? What this guy should be doing that? It, it's trust me. We'll, we'll, we'll be just fine. Talk about that ladder from position coach to coordinator, head coach. Do you feel like line coaches are overlooked? For the coordinator positions, for the head coaching positions, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, here, here's what I do believe: is people hire uh, people that they feel comfortable with in those positions. And then there's some guys I, I've known, coach, line coaches that just didn't want to be uh, a coordinator or a head coach. They love their position. So, and and you have to like the, those positions are are. Um, they're just different, you know. It's probably different than coaching um, Stony and the punters or whatever. So it's 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 a little bit different. So as far as being overlooked, I mean, I think there's more and more guys now around the league that are line coaches that are having opportunities to to be coordinators and um, possibly become head coaches. What's your gut tell you about playing Ryan Tannehill? <laughs> My gut tells me that we're going to have a staff meeting after this, and we'll 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 talk about what what we're going to do to, going forward. What time should I give you a call tomorrow? Uh, after the game on on uh, Saturday. You got play. Thanks, you talk about Simmons kid. Anybody lobbying you to try something new, like Simmons trying to get in the backfield, or anybody want to do something crazy? Well, like I said about uh, Raves and I see football the same. I think everybody's happy and excited, and they think they think, oh, it's just going to be a, a whole bunch of fun. Well, wait till I walk in that meeting at five o'clock. So. <laughs> Bob, Moore, Bob Moore said he wants you to sling it. <laughs> we'll we'll do what we got to do to win. Thank All right, guys. Yeah, I think the most important thing is that they continue to improve on some of the things that we've seen here in the last couple practices. Um, that they start, you know, and continue to work as a unit, you know, helping each other in protection, you know, making sure that we're building the pocket inside or that they're trying to see the things that have shown up here lately in practice. Um, you know, trying to stay inside out on guys, just the fundamentals, you know, the things that we preach, taking the next step in, in live action and, and how we finish, you know, what our conditioning level is. And, um, you know, there'll be a lot of good things to be able to see. When you're evaluating quarterbacks uh, on Saturday, what are some of the things that you look for? What's in the game from watching them in the game? Well, far more valuable. I mean, with being able to, you know, first of all, the, 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 the contact and the, you know, it, it's live now. You know, we do we try to do a great job of of rushing, and our guys have you know, worked well together to to go and work and stay away from the quarterback. Well, you know, the Bears won't be staying away from the quarterback. Um, you know, they'll they'll be trying to. You know, they're going to have to get hit. They're going to have to get knocked down. They're going to have to be able to, you know, to operate in and out of the huddle, the efficiency. You know, get us in a proper play, make uh, you know great decisions, accuracy. Uh, with with a live pass rush, um, and, you know the timing, you know all those things that we talked about last year with Malik, that has improved right through our team periods. Um, those have to continue to improve for him, and then 
you know, Will's first exposure to, to the NFL. Tell you what, what happened, what's happened out here in Cincinnati to what happened in James as far as what means most to you. Well, the, the games are obviously the most important, but there is a, a plenty of exposure uh, the way we practice. I think we practice uh, with purpose, with intent, um, with, with intensity. And so uh, we'll weigh those factors, you know, but I think the guys that can carry over you know, what we've done here in practice and, and their conditioning level and how they're able to, to process information quickly and the situations changing and you know, being able to get back to center from positive plays or, or negative plays. How will you, how, how you handle uh, Nicholas Petit Ferrer's playing time in the preseason based on what he needs to do to get ready versus, you know, not being yeah, available? We'll, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I think, you know, Nick's a specific situation. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. And, you know, he'll he'll play, I would imagine. But, you know, evaluating some other guys. And, and he has to work and he has to get better. And, you know, it's no different than any other center. We'll put the next guy in there and, We'll see how they do. What's your message to the guys about who get their first game action here with this team for the first time about trying to stay loose and not be too uptight about you know not wanting to do too much out there? My message is going to be on today and, and how we practice today, and then you know, we'll see what, what T's message is to the team here tomorrow. You kind of touched on it earlier in the week, but what, on, on Saturday night, will you bounce from position to position? Kind of sure. You know, I mean, I'm going to be there and making sure that the things that we need to do uh, get done. And, and, and obviously overseeing that and uh, you know, just just making sure that, you know, I'm, I'm where I need to be, and I don't think that'll be too hard. Not but, having that head coach title on Saturday, how much will that give you a different perspective to, just to a viewpoint, rather? Well, I think it'll be good to see how we operate with some of the new faces there and see how the communication is with maybe Chris in the secondary, uh, you know, Charles and, and Timmy. You know, working that process and some of the people that we have uh, upstairs. And, you know, I think that it'll be real positive for, for me to be able to focus on those things and you know, making sure that overall we're, we're, we're playing the way that we, we set out to here when we started training camp. Are you going to be quiet on the headset or what's your intention? Uh, you know, I don't. My, my, my intention is to allow Terrell to operate and, and function um, as the head coach. Now, th there's going to be things I would imagine that at some point in time, you know, we, we need to have our field goal kickers kick field goals. You know what I mean? We, we need that. So I'll, I'll have to, you know, if, if that comes up, I'll have to or need to remind them of that. I will. Um, so. What do you think it would have exposed you to had you had the same opportunity when you were in the state? I don't know. You know, Bill O'Brien did a fantastic job helping me with the things outside of maybe the, the game day operations. I was always tried to be into the game, but had a job to do that was different than the head coach. Exposed me to things, you know, the, the, the trainers and the personnel and all the things that you deal with outside of just X's and O's and, and dealing with the team. So that, that was a, a, a great advantage. But, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. And, you know. But just, well, I'm excited to, to see T operate. What's the, I guess the balance like of how much your starters play? You, you want your starters going up against your starters, I imagine. When they Jimmy, play. I can only coach one team at a time. I'm yeah. focused on the Titans, not not what the Bears do. Well, from an evaluation process. Yeah, whoever's across from them, they're going to try to block them or try to, you know, get past them. I, you know, we'll, we'll weigh everything as it goes. It'll be, you know. They'll be. They'll have eleven. We'll have eleven. With Coach T taking the helm, do you have a little added benefit of being able to do a little more player evaluation? Would you mind in different heads coach? Well, whether whether I'm, you know, working a game, the, the, the film will have the film will, will look the same way. So, you know, I don't think so. Will Tim call from the sideline or from the box? Tim will be on the sideline. Is that what, what you expect for him, or you catch him? Tim will be on the sidelines on Saturday at noon. That's all I can tell you. After that, then we'll see where it goes. Appreciate it. Thanks. 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 Like in the, the red zone period uh, there in team drills, does it, is it concerning or you just use it as a building block? Um, I mean, 
I don't know if concerning is the best word. It's, I mean, it's definitely a building block, no doubt. Um, at the end of the day, that's why we have this practice. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, and there's going to be some days where the defense gets after us, and thank God we have a great defense that we have because they're getting us just ready, and, and it's awesome to go against a defense like this because they're not going to make it easy on us. It's not going to be just easy plays out there for us. So uh, we got to dig deep and work hard and get those plays, and uh, I, I think it's just something to help build us, and then it, it just – you know, iron sharpening and iron. I mean, we got great players out there. They get paid a lot of money too, and and for them to, to get after us, you know, we just got to come back the next day and, and get back after it. You look at your position. That's probably like the most one that needs to gel the most on the field. How does that process come about? Where it's like, is there a time period that you need in order to get to that situation where you guys are at, at that point? Um. Not sure if there's a time period. I think it, it just comes down to reps, and I couldn't tell you how many reps it's going to take. I mean, at the end of the day, it's different every year, and just the more reps you can get, the better. And um, it, and it comes down to everybody in the room being able to understand. So when we go back and watch film, you know, everybody talking, getting on the same page. Because say somebody goes down out there, and we need another piece to fill in, he needs to fill in right where we're at. We can't just start over and you know start gelling again. So. Um, it, it's a, just multiple reps getting with each other, and then every once in a while we'll have a guy down one day and then be able to get a new guy in there and then just being able to help him, you know, communicate the same and then everybody understanding, like, what we're saying. So that way when we go out there and play, everybody's on the same page, and it's just going to help us mesh together. How important are actual game reps in, in that process? Uh, game reps are huge because, I mean, at the – like, Going against our defense every day, it's awesome, but it also, you know, you get, you kind of get used to the same things. They know our tendency, tendencies, and then uh, they know like our calls, so that you know they're a step ahead. And then it, it's kind of a, a game within a game. Um, so it kind of, it's it's nice to get out against a different team because they're going to present different problems. You know, they're going to run their games a little differently when they run their pass rush. They're going to run their twists differently. They're going to give different things away. And so you're going to be have to be able to understand that and see how those guys operate. So uh, game reps are always huge because it's a, a different type of player. What's been like going different things different the line and practice and how much of that makes the entire group uh, better? Uh, I mean, it's been awesome. It's it's great to go against our defensive line. Um, we got several different types of rushers, and then they're they're hitting a lot of different moves. So you're getting the best of every world. You're not just getting finesse guys. You're not just getting power guys. Our guys work a lot of different moves, and so it's nice to be able to go against players like that. And then we have some very high caliber players to go against. So I mean, it's just continually like iron sharpening iron, just getting better. A lot of times, uh, starters don't play at all in the preseason especially like in a preseason opener. But with so many new faces on this offensive line, you feel like it'll be beneficial for you guys to get just get some work together on the field Saturday? I'd say reps in general are always beneficial. So, I mean, uh, that's not my call to make. That's the head coach's job. But uh, I will say no matter what, getting reps is going to be beneficial, whatever guy's out there. And at the end of the day, it's a long season. So whoever's out there, there's going to be a lot of players that are going to be, whether it's on the front end of the season or the back end of the season, that are going to be playing this year. So it's going to be beneficial for any guy that's out there. I was talked earlier about during the off season, you guys looking at, potential matchups and schemes that you'll face over the course of the whole 17 games that you see. How how much do you plug back into that, or is that the starting point for you when you come up to week one, week two, week three? And how much of a sense do you start the season with about like what's ahead of you big picture, even as you focus you know, game by game? So you're talking about like preseason, like the matchups that we have no, and using no. that? When or you, you, when you get to the regular season, knowing kind of how much of a sense do you have of, of the slate that's ahead of you from from what you do in the off season? Um, I mean, we don't try to focus too much on like week one, week two. I mean, you're trying to focus on the day at hand. Um, so we're, we're just right now out there focusing and getting better, meshing as a group and, and getting our, our communication down right now and just kind of playing ball. Um, when we- spring, did, did, Were you studying, you know, week five, I'm gonna see this guy and I need to work on, on this, things like that? Uh, not necessarily. It's kind of you got to you got to focus on the day at hand because at the end of the day, that's in the future. And then if I'm focused on week five, when week one comes, how does week five help me? So it's going to be at the end of the day, we got to win day by day. 
And so right now it's kind of winning training camp, being able to focus on what, what do you need to get better at and what uh, techniques do you need to work on. And then at the end of the day, we all know this is a newer offensive line and how can we mesh together. Um, when we get to week five, we'll focus on week five. But right now it's focusing on the day at hand. Um, and then right now we got Chicago coming up at a preseason game, and that's going to be a huge game. And uh, part of the reason I asked that question about whether you meant the preseason games is Chicago's head coach comes from Indianapolis, which we all know who we're going to face. So right now at this week, we have a very good opportunity to go against a defense that's going to be very similar to a defense that we'll face later on in this season. So focusing on today and how we're going to face these guys will be beneficial going forward. So um, that's part of it, I think, the most. Rather than trying to look at the rushers that you have in the future, focusing on how you can win today is going to just help you for the future. So when you go against somebody today, whether I go against a guy in camp or somebody, and they happen, we get to that week, and there's a rusher similar to them, I can think back, OK, what moves did I use against this guy to help me face? Now, everybody's a little different. There's going to be something different. But um, the, what we do right here and now is going to be more important than trying to focus on something that's in the future. What have you learned um, about uh, Chris in just a few days that you guys have together? How's that process of our chemistry come along? I mean, Chris is an experienced player. He, he's, he's a great player, and um, it's awesome to be next to him. He, he's got some insight you know, that's a little different. He's been in a few different places, so he kind of teaches me some technique things different, and then you know, I kind of tell him what, what I'm doing, and it's just kind of a nice little mess trying to figure out, okay, how are you going to take this approach this double team when we have this look, and then how are you going to approach this set when we have pass bro, and just trying to get on the same page because the best we can be when we're going into a double team of fitting it so we're fitting exactly right so we're not stepping on each other hurting each other getting to the play versus um, like the same in pass pro like if he sets vertical and I set flat now we're on different levels so it's gonna be a big pain if we have to pass off games or if somebody's in trouble being able to help so being on that same page of how are you gonna set this look and like what types of set do you like in this situation what sets are you gonna take so the more that we can be on the same page and, and kind of in, in unison the better it will be another team after going to the same guys in practice every, every day. Yeah, I feel like, you know, especially the younger guys kind of getting a chance to be uh, in an NFL stadium is pretty special. You know, I know I am. I want to go out there and hit someone else. I mean, we haven't tackled to the ground, really, so I'm looking forward to that. When you play, whether it's this week or whenever, you expect to play twice as much because you have two jobs? Uh, I'm not quite sure. I think, you know, we have guys, I, I feel like um, the coaches kind of will rotate however they see fit. I think in practice, I mean, in practice, I've been getting both reps at nickel and safety, and I, I haven't necessarily gotten twice as many reps. I've been getting a lot of reps, but not twice as many. So. You're for the first you know, kind of game, so you've taken a lot of snaps at safety. But, uh, looking forward to that challenge? Yeah, yeah, I am. I feel like um, any time, like the transition from practice to, the, to an actual game, um, in the I feel like I'm I'm always a little more instinctual and I can kind of play more free just because you know I'm not it's kind of too late to worry about messing up it's like you got to perform right now so um, yeah I'm I'm looking forward to kind of doing that at a new position and, and and seeing how things go. When the defense wins the day like it appears to the naked eye that you guys have done for several days out here in camp yeah how much stock do you? Do you guys as players and as a defense, how much can you put into that? Yeah, I mean, we just try to stack those days, you know what I mean? And it's not going to be every day, but – and we've had we've had kind of days where even though we, I guess from the outside looking in, it looked like we won or it looked like it was competitive. We've had those days where it wasn't quite up to our standard, you know what I mean? Whether that's our energy levels weren't as high or, 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 or this or that. But um, we definitely want to stack days like today. I think it gives everyone confidence. Um. Yeah. Tackle somebody the ground in a while. I mean, how much? How much do preseason games help? How much do you want to play? I know some guys don't play at all. Do you feel like it's beneficial to you in prepping for the season? Yeah, I want to play for sure because I didn't really get that much run last year. I didn't play. You know, I didn't do any. Tra I didn't really do any OTAs training camp. You know, I kind of had two games here and there, kind of whatever, piecing it together. So I definitely want to get out there and start banking my reps so come season I can feel confident. Uh, with learning safety, does it feel like you're still in the learning phase of figuring out how to do it, or is it more just you're getting experiences and knocking the reps together? 
Um, a little bit of both. Uh, you know, there's now it's to the point where I'm learning like the little nuances and the little details that, um, you know, I'm not. It's not just the basics anymore. It's kind of like level 300 now, um, and I'm just trying to like. I feel like I know I know the coverages, I know kind of the details, and I just have to go trust it and, and play like I know how to play. Does that do it? Next one. That was Thank quick. You. Thank you, guys.